Uh, and the next speaker is Niels. Uh, and the talk is going to be about uh, building a customized application dashboard with Pluto.jl. Applause for our speakers. So, good morning and welcome to my uh, talk. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Um, today I will be talking about building a customized application dashboard with Pluto.jl. First I will briefly introduce Pluto to those who don't already know Pluto. I'll talk about uh, what our motivation for the dashboard was, previous efforts, what our approach was like, how we built the dashboard, some limitations we came across, a working example, and the future of our project. So first of all, what even is Pluto? Pluto is a notebook environment for Julia, which enables interactive development with live updates and dynamic visualizations. It has a reactive execution model, which means that cells automatically re-evaluate when their dependencies change. In the image, you can see a Pluto cell with some code in it at the bottom of the image, that creates a plot, and the plot is then getting shown at the top of the image in the output of the Pluto cell. So we wanted to create a dashboard for Pluto to demonstrate a package. Um, using this dashboard in an appealing, convenient, and I interactive way, so it's um, usable for everyone and not only for people who can code, like normal Pluto notebooks. It is, um, our main goal is that it should be easy for developers to show off their hard work while also being accessible for everyone to target um, a bigger audience. There also has been previous work in the past, first being visualization dashboards with Pluto by um, Guillermo Gomes Hettinger, which creates a dashboard by using Pluto's isolated cell feature and Pluto dashboards and Excel, which makes it movable to create a dashboard. It's important that those projects have different approaches and are, not, uh, and are independent from our own project. So how does our approach even work? First of all, as we've seen in the first image, when we put some code in a Pluto cell, it gets um, shown at the output of the Pluto cell. And we can also put an HTML string into a Pluto cell, and it's then getting rendered at the output of the cell, as we see in the image below. We can do the same with um, JavaScript. We can just insert a script tag into the HTML string. And you can see in the image that um, I've put an alert in it, and the alert is then getting shown at the top of the screen. Now that we can use JavaScript, we can also um, add style or link text either to the head or in the image below. I just um, put it in the HTML string. And we can use that to load CSS frameworks or add our custom styling. In the image below, I've loaded Bootstrap. You can also um, obviously use uh, the integrity tag, but that would be pretty long for this example, and you see I am red and I am blue, and those are red and blue because I use the Bootstrap utility classes. So now the most important part, but also kind of uh, most techy part, how do we create a connection between Julia and the browser so we can use JavaScript from Julia? 
First of all, we create a Pluto cell that contains a text box. We can see that in cell 3, down here, if you can see my pointer. And um, then we have a function to handle the text box value. The text box value is just a variable here that well, holds the text box value. And when we modify the text box value with a JavaScript, so basically we just write something in here. In this case, it's hello world. Um, it triggers the handler function to run because, as I said earlier, Pluto is reactive. And um, when the text box value changes, this cell gets re-evaluated and is, well, obviously calling the handle text box value. Um, and the handler function calls the desired function that we wanted to call. In this case, it's, well, um, just a static string, but it can obviously also be a variable depending on a text box. And it returns its return value. So in the end, the return value can either be a HTML string, so HTML or JavaScript or even CSS, or a primitive type. Now we can assemble all those, thing, all those uh, things. And this allows us to render custom HTML code wherever. We can either have it as output of a cell or just move it below the body with JavaScript. We can also resize the whole notebook or just um, hide it so it uh, won't look like a Pluto notebook anymore. We can load uh, custom CSS frameworks or use our own CSS to make styling everything easier because CSS frameworks are nice to do that. We can also create interactivity with HTML components like a button or text box or drop downs and uh, JavaScript. And as we've seen in the last slide, we can call Julia functions uh, from JavaScript. Uh, we can call Julia functions from JavaScript and get the return values. And um, since it's still a Pluto notebook, we can give advanced users the possibility to write uh, Julia code in traditional Pluto cells, so we can embed Pluto cells in our HTML, and much more. Only creativity is the limit in this case. There are still a few limitations we came across. First being it's not really generalized at the moment, so it's a high effort to create a new dashboard. Second being there's no implemented function to move Pluto cells, so they need to be moved manually by the developer with uh, either CSS or JavaScript. And there's only a single user capacity, because right now it's not possible to host such a uh, Pluto dashboard on a server. So only one user can use it at the same time. So in the end, you just git clone it and then use it. Here we can see a working example. As you see, it doesn't really look like a Pluto notebook, or if you are also familiar with Julia, uh, with uh, Jupyter. It doesn't look like a notebook. And we can see at the top, there's a few HTML elements, like a button and a dropdown, where the user can input some data. And then the user can plot this data. And overall, this is um, way easier for people who can't code because they well, don't have to write code. They only have to put some values in there, and then they can try the library. This is also uh, pretty interesting because we can see some data. Each row is basically one Julia object that we fetch with uh, JavaScript from Julia, from the running Julia process. And there's also a few buttons to um, well, yeah, change these values. And all of this is written in HTML and uh, JavaScript for the interactivity. And um, we only fetch the values from, from Julia. On the last uh, image, you can see Pluto cells. And as you can probably see, they are look quite different from Pluto cells because I've changed the design. I'm uh, not a designer, but it still looks uh, pretty OK, I guess. But yeah, um, for advanced users can just write some code in it and uh, play with the library. 
It's also possible to add more Pluto cells, but yeah, those are sufficient for now. So what's the future of this project? Right now, the project is just a proof of concept of Pluto dashboards. We were just playing around to, to find uh, cool features. And we were exploring possibilities coming from JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And right now, we are working on a generalized approach, tackling the limitations. First being that we want to be able to move cells easily, have a more reliable connection between Julia and the browser, because right now it looks cool, it's hacky, but using WebSockets is uh, way more robust and scalable. And um, last but not least, it should be easy and convenient for developers to create a dashboard, not only for users to use it. So our primary goal of the project is to give developers a toolbox they can work with to make Pluto dashboards a thing. At the bottom, you can uh, see the GitHub repos. If you want to, you can test them out. But I would only recommend testing out the first two, because that's the um, project that um, you've seen on the big images. The last, prod uh, the last GitHub repo is the interface that we are currently developing. And it's, well, um, yeah, not really usable at the moment. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. I encourage everyone to try it out. Uh, thanks. Uh, in the interest of time, we have to proceed with our next speaker. But uh, catch up with Niels later for more questions.